Good day and welcome. I hope you are well. Today are we going to discuss how scientists count plants in an area to find out more about the biodiversity in an area. But hold on, before we do this, let's briefly relook at what is biodiversity and what is a species. Biodiversity refers to all different plants and animals on Earth and their habitats. High biodiversity is like having a playground packed with different activities. You might have swings, slides, monkey bars, a sandbox, a basketball court, and even a little garden. Lots of kids can play different games and have fun, right? This is like a habitat with high biodiversity where there are many different types of plants and animals. Now, imagine the playground has only swings and slides. Not very exciting, right? This is like a habitat with low biodiversity. This forest on the left has many types of trees, bird species, and both big and small animals. If you pause and count, you see that there are nine types of animals and seven types of plants. Again, if you pause and count the living things in the forest on the right, you will see that it only has only three types of animals and three types of plants. So, biodiversity describes how many types of organisms are living in a single location. It's not how many individual organisms are currently living there but how many types. We can conclude that the forest on the left has high biodiversity, because it has many more types of living organisms than the forest on the right which has low biodiversity. A species is a group of living things that are very similar to each other and can have babies that look like them. For example, dogs are a species, cats are a different species, and people are a species too. A dog will only give birth to a dog and not a cat. It's the same with plants, you can only get maize seed from a maize plant, you cannot get rice seeds. With this knowledge we will now look at how scientists count plants to tell them about the biodiversity of an area. Scientists often use a small square or rectangle to look closely at a part of nature, like a field or a park. Imagine you have a favorite park or garden and you want to know how many different plants and animals live there. You would take the small square, which is like a mini window and place in the area you want to study. After this you then identify and carefully count and write down how many different types of plants and animals you can see. You can distinguish different types of plants by looking at the plant leaves, flowers, stem or seeds. Different plant species have different shapes and sizes of leaves. Some leaves are big and smooth, while others might be small and pointy. Flowers come in many colors and shapes. Some plants have big, colorful flowers, while others might have small, simple ones. The flower can be a good clue to tell one plant species from another. The stem is like the plant's backbone. Some are tall and straight, while others might be short and spread out. The stem can help you identify the plant. Plants make different kinds of fruits or seeds. Some have big fruits like apples, while others might have small seeds that scatter in the wind. You can record in your notebook the number of plant types or animal types you can see. You can also draw these plants in your notebook. A scientist might do this in different parts of the park or garden to see if there are more or fewer plants and animals in one place compared to another. The number of different plants and animals they find helps scientists understand the biodiversity of the area. If scientists find many different species, many different types of plants and animals, it means the area has high biodiversity, which is good because it shows that nature is healthy. If scientists find only a few types of plants and animals in the square, it means the area has low biodiversity. Low biodiversity might mean that the area is not a good habitat for many different plants and animals to live. Try this at home or at a park near you. We have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it. Today's lesson is inspiring me to become a scientist.